Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Bonjour, Pervivet, Guten Tag, Hola, Ciao to my foreign friends. Today we're going to be talking about these fantastic modern slip joints. If you look at this, as you look at this knife, it has a kind of a vintage design to it, an old uh, saddle horn design, but that's where the old stuff stops. And you can see here it has G10 scales. That is a compressed fiberglass um, in resin material that makes this impermeable to water, oil, blood, anything. And very highly scratch resistant. This knife, um, the scales on it should last forever. Uh, you can see it has really cool design pins in it. If we flip it over, these are high high security torque screws so you can completely disassemble this knife and reassemble it without damaging the scales to the knife that's a lot different than the design of this knife which is pinned and and taking it apart is going to damage something you'd have to refinish the whole knife to take it apart so that's the beauty of these uh, modern slip joints uh, but there's a, a lot of uh, confusion about these knives. You know, what really is a modern slip joint knife? What do they look like? What are their characteristics? We're going to talk about that in the upcoming video. And if you'd like to hear more about it, check out the rest of the video. Okay. Walking down one of our favorite trails here. It's all uh, greened out for the summer. Lush. It's lush, baby. Got a cool looking mold here. You know that. Nice. Alright. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, I have to tell you first off, this is one of the hardest videos. Um, I ever had to produce and the reason is that these knives these modern slip joint knives have not been in the mainstream too long so this knife here produced by Kershaw it's called the Culpepper uh, was produced in 2020 and shortly after that uh, Benchmade and Cold Steel jumped on board to produce similar knives but um, that's only three years old. And so um, certainly m knife makers have taken slip joints and worked on them, upgraded them. And you can see the pictures that I'm posting. This mainly entailed, you know, cosmetics, um, fancy bolsters, fancy work on the spine or fabulous scales, that kind of thing. But it was only about 10 years ago that uh, modern uh, custom knife makers started making slip joints like this. And so this is a lot more like a, a uh, modern folder. And that's when uh, the work really began to modernize these and take the slip joint, the traditional slip joint, and make it more modern, but it's still a slip joint. And so... We're going to talk about that and delve into it a little bit more. If you look at this knife, this was uh, a very early Spyderco knife. Um, you can see it doesn't have both sides uh, FR, or, uh, molded FRN, and it has the clip on it. The claim to fame to this knife is it had this spidey hole, with the, which allowed you to open it with one hand. And the, uh, they had serrated edges on them, and they had uh, pocket clips on them. And this was uh, revolutionary at the time uh, when these knives came out. So the first Spyderco came out, uh, was called a Worker. This has no name on it, but it's, it's what led to the Delica uh, pocket knife. This is a very small one. Produced probably around uh, 84 to 86, sometime in there. And um, they just can't, kept uh, improving after that. Ultimately, you ended up with the modern folder that we are all accustomed to. And 
what that means is you had 40 years of producing these knives. 40 years, manufacturers produced them. They designed them. OEMs produced the hardware for them. And um, guys like you and I purchased them, used them, and people collected them. So that's almost a half a century worth of history. You don't have that on these knives right here. So if you look at this knife, for example, it looks kind of uh, traditional, doesn't it? And this is a knife that is a TL-29 uh, from World War II. And if you look at them, they're very, very comparable. And that's because this is a two-bladed regular jack. And this is a single-blade regular jack design. So it's a vintage design on this knife. A lot of guys are calling this a uh, Barlow. It's not. A Barlow, the... The Barlow is a knife, is a regular jack that has a bolster that's a third the size of the knife, which would bring that bolster about right to here. So it's it's not a Barlow. It's a regular jack, single blade regular jack. But um, besides the pattern being kind of traditional, um, the scale, scale material here is copper. So um, copper is not really space age stuff that's been around for a long time. It's been in knives, uh, at least from the Civil War, but uh, further back than that. So the scale material is not actually space age. But you can see that you have two uh, modern high torque uh, screws here. And that secures, that is the pin for the back spring. And here's a head pin. You'll notice that the pivot pin for the blade uh, is hidden and that's very similar to this knife and so you, you I don't think there's any way to take this knife apart that's one of the hallmarks of a modern um, knife is being able to disassemble it easily another thing about this knife you've got a traditional nail nick here if you open the knife up there is jump in here and that is a, a new thing modern thing and you can see that the blade steel is D2. So D2, D2 has been really popular over about the past 10 years. It is definitely an upgrade from 1095. It's very tough steel. It has really good uh, wear resistance. And edge retention on the blade is superior to most... Um, um, stainless steels and um, 1095 uh, but it's not exactly a space age steel so D2 was was patented in 1927 by uh, George Stockman I think his name was I think that was his name Compton George Compton and um, it's it's not exactly space age, so you know, should you consider this a modern boulder? If you look at this knife here by Kaiser, this is a slam dunk. This is like the epitome of a modern slip joint knife. You've got the G10 scales, you have the uh, easily removable hardware on this so you can disassemble the knife, put it together. It has a, a um, pocket clip on it. It has a spidey hole on it that you can uh, open the knife more easily. And if you look at this blade steel, it's N690. Uh, so that's not exactly space age either, but it, it, it is an improved stainless steel. Uh, it's easier to work with. It has better edge retention and better corrosion resistance than 440 or 420 or VG10. So this is a state-of-the-art, uh, really nice um, uh, modern slip joint. If you look at this one right here, this is a Volpus from uh, Box Knives. Sorry about that. Volpus from Box Knives. It has titanium scales. Titanium is definitely space age stuff. You open the blade up and it's M390 steel. 
that is a powder metallurgy steel. Um, it's an older one. It, I think it was patented in 1998, but um, it's very popular today because of the characteristics of the steel. And if you look at this, it is a true slip joint knife. It has a back spring. And um, the problem with this is if you look at the pens, they're traditional pens. And so you can't disassemble this knife. So do you consider this a modern slip joint knife? Because you can't disassemble it. If you look at this knife, it would seem to be a slam dunk for a uh, modern slip joint knife. You have micarta scales on this knife. Micarta is a material resin type of uh, scale material. Uh, they use paper, linen, canvas, different materials um, to produce these. Uh, again, just like G10, a very durable handle material. Um, a lot of guys prefer this micarta because it's not as slick as G10 when it's wet. You have the modern uh, attach and hardware. You can take this knife apart, put it together to repair or clean it. It has the clip on it, the pocket clip. It has a modern opening uh, on this knife. But the uh, blade steel on this knife is um, not really a super steel. It's uh, 10 CR 15 MOV. So that's a Chinese steel. It is an upgrade over uh, 7 CR 15 MOV, which is a Chinese stainless steel. And... Um, you know, it's new. It's definitely new. But there's a really big problem with this knife. So if we open it up and look at it, hey, where's the back spring? Right? There's no back spring. Now this knife is sold as a slip joint knife. But what it really is is a double detent knife. And so on this knife, on this on the um, liners of the knife you have a little ball that compresses into a spring and on the blade you have a little detent and so as the blade comes around to the to the uh, ball it snaps in like that so when it's closed there's a ball on this spring here on the bottom and you hear it and so that holds a knife uh, closed and when you open it up you hear it that ball holds the knife open it won't shut the detents though are really light like if you're um, gauging a slip joint you this would be a one or a two so very very light uh, detent on these knives but um, on this model the stylum from uh, Civivi it has a nice cut out here even if it pops down, it's not going to, uh, you can see, it's not going to cut you. But um, I would not consider this a modern slip joint because it's not a slip joint. This is another one using that double detent um, system. You can see you have anodized hardware on here. It is high security removable hardware uh, clip. You have a flipper deployment method on this knife. and But the problem is, is it's not a slip joint. You know, it's a double detent knife. So, you know, that's pretty confusing. Both of these knives were sold, advertised as slip joint knives. So, um, when I looked on the internet, there was one reference to modern slip joint knives that was from a a um, knife maker and it said that a modern slip joint knife is a slip joint knife with modern scale materials and modern steels in it but i really don't think that that is an adequate uh, description of what these knives are so i'm going to give you a definition on these knives a modern slip joint is a knife that that works off a slip joint action and that has one of the following either a modern scale material 
modern attachment hardware or modern uh, modern blade and so with that definition um, although D2 came out as a steel in uh, 1927 it really wasn't used in um, uh, knives until around 2000 the, the end of the 90s 2000 mainly being used by like uh, Bob Dozier made this steel famous in his custom knives so about 10 years ago um, this becomes a really popular knife and I will classify that as uh, a new steel used in knives at least and so this knife would classify as a modern folder this knife here it doesn't have a slip joint it has everything else but it doesn't have a slip joint so it would not be a modern slip joint and I think that's really a stretch when knife companies are calling this a slip joint knife. Anybody who gets one right away is going to be mad because it just, it's not as, uh, um, it just, the detents are too light on it. And um, you can still use this, it's functional, but I think uh, you would be disappointed if you bought this thinking it was a slip joint. And so um, that's where I come down. A modern uh, slip joint knife is a knife that has a, um, a, a slip, true slip joint and has either m new modern scale materials, attaching hardware, <coughs> or uh, modern uh, blade steel. And so that would fit a lot of those descriptions. Um, before we close, I wanted to show you this knife here. It's a cold steel ranch boss. And you can look at the back, and it does have a slip joint on it. Works just like a slip joint, but it has a uh, locking mechanism here. It has a liner lock. So if you move that liner lock over, this knife won't shut. And that's because it's controlled by the uh, back spring. So this is a true slip joint. And not only that, it has modern attachment hardware on it. And um, the scale material is Delrin, but actually, you know, Delrin came out in the 60s. Uh, G10 came out in the 50s, and Micarta came out in uh, 1910. Westinghouse produced uh, Micarta. So uh, this is actually, Delrin is actually newer than the other more popular handle materials now. So I would classify that as a modern uh, slip joint knife also. So I hope you found this video informative. It was very complicated to make this and dig this information up. It's just not out there. And that's why I did this video uh, for you. So um, thanks so much for watching. Remember, you know the truth. The truth will set you free. And uh, thanks again, guys.